On this week's episode of the Ritual Misery Podcast, I'm going to talk about an interesting voicemail that I got. We celebrated Thanksgiving with our families. That was always fun. Uh, have you ever played Sushi Go? No. Is that something on the internet that Ralph broke? Um, He broke a lot of things on the internet. We'll talk about that as well. And we have our guest, Owen J.J. Stone, a.k.a. O-Doctor. I am not putting on video for this episode because you two can't be trusted. So I will be here via audio only. Hello, party people. Hello. Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 195 for Thursday, the 29th of November, 2018. This is show where two lifelong friends and their guests celebrate all things Greek, uh, celebra- ce- ce- celebrate, I don't even know what I'm talking about right now. <laughs> we're going to uh, celebrate all things Greek because apparently oh. we're fraternity members now. Yes, yeah, something like that. I'm Amos, that's Kent, and uh, the other, the, the voice that you will hear but not see is Owen J.J. Stain. <laughs> AKA O Doctor. This is why Thursdays are so rough, man. This is this is it right here. Oh Alpha my! <laughs> Sigma, Sigma. Sigma. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Holy crap! Um, so this last week was was Thanksgiving. Anybody do anything special? Because I I worked on computers all weekend. I mean, I you know uh, had some folks over from work. I, I kind of. Back when I was a master sergeant in the Air Force and I had a bunch of underlings or, you know, troops that worked for me, I would, all the single dudes that didn't have family here, I would invite them over. Um, and this, I'm no longer a flight chief, but I do have a shop with people that don't have their family here. So I've invited a few guys over. Um, and it was, it was great. Uh, lots of amazing food and, and good times. And yeah. Uh, Owen, what'd you, what'd you get up to on Thanksgiving? Uh, for the last 17 years, I've invaded a white family uh, where I'm the only black person. My roommate 17 years ago took me to his family Thanksgiving where two families come together. There's about 30 people. It was so nice and white and delightful that I said to myself, I ain't never going back to my black family Thanksgiving. <laughs> oh, my God. And though he has moved away to San Diego, I still show up every year for Thanksgiving <laughs> with my tray of macaroni and cheese. He has not been to Thanksgiving in seven years, but I have. <laughs> and these white people adore me. They love me. The only time we had a kerfuffle at a white Thanksgiving was the great uh, potato episode of 2013 where uh, Mama Bev thought that we didn't need mashed potatoes. And uh, I started a revolt and a riot at Thanksgiving. At first, I was the only one crying about it. Then I went to the children and I told them how much they needed potatoes. And then she broke out a potato and microwaved it for me. Then everybody else wanted potatoes. Next thing you know, mashed potatoes were served at that Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving was saved by me. Um, <laughs> but yes, this, uh, this this family is a great family. Uh, uh, it's two. The two main households are Jewish and Christian. The husband's a Jew, married a Christian. The wife's a Jew, married a Christian. So it's like I get my Hanukkah and my Christmas tree and my matzo ball soup all together. It's a great Thanksgiving. Uh, wonderful Caucasians that bring me in as the black sheep and comedian for Thanksgiving. See, it's amazing my Thanksgivings are. I, I, I was thinking about inviting you over to our place. So I think we're just going to crash it with you because holy crap, that sounds amazing. Dude, come on over. These awesome. people would these people would love you. I bring people. I bring guests every once in a blue. So come through. They're they're just amazing Caucasians. They don't argue. They don't fight. The spread is outrageous. <laughs> uh, shrimps, uh, wiener hot dogs, uh, clams, casino uh, uh, dips and cheeses of all assortments. It's three different kinds of soups, uh, meatballs. This is all appetizers, brother. This is all appetizers. <laughs> God, we haven't gotten to the meal. Pineapples and grapes and uh, a, a whole table full of snacks and cookies and pies and creams and mm, I mean, my mouth is watering just thinking about it. <laughs> I, mine too. Like, I oh. think we're gonna bring like the entire RMP audience to this Thanksgiving next. All year. twelve of us. <laughs> man, come through, man! I tell you what, come through. Holy crap! It's, um, it's amazing. So this is a. Uh, Opposite of mashed potatoes, I've had my my annual uh, sinus infection that I get every single year because why not? It's the 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 thing that always happens when I never want it to because you know there's there's convenient times to be sick and there's con- inconvenient times. This well, week there's less convenient. Times yeah, yeah, okay, there you go. Slightly 
not less. Um, yesterday I was on DTNS as a guest for the first time, like an actual guest. And of course I could barely talk. I was chewing gum all morning long, trying to get, get uh, my voice to be normal. And it wasn't. So I had to tweak all my settings to where I actually sounded halfway human. And, uh, yeah, so my big news is that I was on DTNS as a guest because I was, I've been hoping for that for a while, but, uh, of course I was sick during it. So there's that go listen and tell me how awful it sounded. I listened to it today on my drive home from work and I thought it was great. I liked it a lot. You didn't sound, uh, you might've sounded a slightly under the weather, like, like, um, like I do right now. (laughs) Your enthusiasm was a bit muted, Mm. but your voice actually sounded fine. So whatever settings you tweaked, um, yeah, it worked. Um, I encourage all of our listeners to go check out Tuesday, no Wednesday's episode of of uh, DTNS. That is, um, what is today? Today is the twenty ninth. So the twenty eighth <laughs> of November, twenty eighteen episode of DTNS, where Amos talks about um, communication tools for military members that are deployed overseas and like how it has changed over the years. It's a very insightful. Very interesting conversation that that Amos has with Sarah and Tom. Yeah, it was one of those things where I, man, just pure experience. But uh, it it was interesting to see how, because I hadn't really thought about it until Tom asked me. And then I started writing down some notes about how things had changed. And, you know, going from snail mail to relying on DSN phone calls, things like that. Like, I was surprised how much had changed in the 17 or 18 years since my first deployment. It was kind of crazy. Yeah, totally. I can, I can make you feel a whole lot better about the beginning of your story. So, when you started off about your annual sickness, I would say to you, be blessed that you don't have the November uh, cold sore herpy breakout that everybody gets. <laughs> it's when you find out who has diseases. You just wait till November creeps up, the first crisp, the first snap of cold, and you look at somebody's lip, and you're like, okay, we can't date. So. Uh, <laughs> Uh, at least, at least you didn't have that issue uh, this year because you know you saying you have to get it every year. I was thinking of herpes because you're saying every year. And yeah. Nah, I instantly went to the oh you got the herp. Oh but, no. Uh, you got the flare up. You got the November cold. flare up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Th- that that's a little bit of cold and, and sore throat is much better. Yeah, than, no, I I definitely agree. Herp flare up. <laughs> Luckily, I've oh. never I've never had the the cold sores and the 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 old herp. Um, good, like, good, good. But, uh, yeah, that's, uh, I don't, I, I thank you for putting that in perspective. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You gotta have perspective in life. Also, uh, for all listeners, I am talking with my creepy voice on purpose, uh, just to creep people out. You know, I've already been on the show once. I feel like I should give this show a different feeling or vibe so that it sounds like you have an extra guest, not, not a repeated guest, like a new Yes. Oh, so this so, is this is O Doctor 2.0. Oh, this is O Doctor Deep right here. I put, <laughs> I put an octave in my brother. Right now, I'm, I'm holding a loogie in the middle of my throat. See how long it'll last. <laughs> I like it. I like it. All right, Kate, uh, uh, tell me about this sushi go. What is what is yeah, what's yeah, going on right, here? So I, I talked about having guests over for Thanksgiving, mm-hmm. right? And uh, one of them brought a few uh, board games and card games over. And one of them was this game called Sushi Go, where the idea is to build a plate of sushi. It sounds like, okay, sure, guy, let's go ahead and and play this game about building sushi. Dude, this is a like a deck building, like kind of almost like a trick building type game. Mm. It is so fun. I entered this game like kind of confused, not sure what we're supposed to do and kind of like, really, dude, it's sushi. By the time we finished the first round, I was like, oh, we're totally playing this again. And we played it, I don't know, a handful of times. It is super fun, man. It's so it works like a, a, um, what, what, what do you call that? Where you like, you know, when you're at a sushi bar, right? The one that has like the rotating table. What do you call that? Oh, what do you know what that's called? Like when, when you like rotate the table around, you take off like, you know, the, the components that you want. A, a mobile table. <laughs> We'll go with that. He said so, no. <laughs> so a mobile table. Mobile table. Sushi components, right? So like you 
you slide it around, you know, you grab your sashimi and then you slide it a little bit more. And then you, you know, you grab your California roll and then you slide it around and you grab your, you know, it, that's the idea that it works on because you have, you have your hand of cards and then you, you look at your cards and you figure, okay, uh, this is the kind of hand I want to build to. So you keep one card and then you pass your entire hand to the next person. And then in turn, you receive the entire hand, you know, minus one card, mm-hmm. the entire hand from the guy to your right. And then you like, okay, out of these cards, hmm, all right, I'll take this one. And then so on and so forth, right? You keep passing your hand. It sounds like not super fun. It is super fun. And I encourage everyone to just go check. This. Find a friend that has this game because I, I realized that this game is actually pretty popular. One of your friends owns a copy of this game. <laughs> Find that person, figure out who that person is in your workplace or you're in your neighborhood and then arrange the opportunity to play this game with them. And you're probably going to buy it. Wow. And if you do, um, I encourage you to use our Amazon link. It's going to be in the show notes because <laughs> it is super fun. And also we'll take the uh, five or six cents that we get off of that purchase. Um, so we, we played games around here too. The kids were down here playing my, uh, my SNES uh, in my office, my, my SNES classic. And they keep they kept kicking the box for my uh, my Guitar Hero World Tour, and uh-huh. finally they were like, "Hey, can we play that?" And I was like, "You know what? Fuck it. Let's." This is big. Is it? <laughs> what was that? I don't know. Oh, it, I'm I'm looking up to try and understand the Kokozoyo game of Sushi Go. <laughs> so I, I pulled up a video uh, while you guys continue to carry on and speak about this game that I'm never going to play in my lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> so little game okay so yeah uh we we broke out the guitar hero and uh, you know the drums and the mic and everything else and both guitars and the kids basically the rest of the weekend we just heard uh one of the kids smacking the shit out of the drum set like pretty much the entire rest of the weekend it was just tat 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 because yeah. they could only play in basic they could only play in the super easy mode so you said you said your sna- your snes classic yeah right? like is that the um the, the pre-built uh um, mm-hmm. yeah okay so it's interesting that you brought that up because this weekend something else that i did was we had two snes's like actual like from the 90s snes's and they were both broken one of them was just a lost cause it was literally in several pieces <laughs> and that ended up in the trash the other one, however, I was able to fix just this weekend, and I have been playing the shit out of Killer Instinct, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm super thrilled that it's I so awful. will be able to revisit my library of my some of my favorite games of all time. So, uh, Legend of Zelda: Link to the Past, got that. Uh, Super Mario World, like all of got those that. things. Um, but I've got the uh, you know the original cartridges that well, I bought in. I, I do too for both of those games. I just don't have the, the system to play it on anymore. <laughs> I, I have I a Raspberry do. Pi Nintendo set up <laughs> that I can play thousands of games. I, I'm i not enough retro enough to keep cartridges around anymore. Those are fire hazards, brother. So <laughs> be careful with those cartridges. You out here blowing, having an asthma attack, trying to get the game to play, and then getting a, a heart attack when it freezes after 22 minutes deep. And you wonder why the game don't work and you out there spanking the back of the cartridge like a baby. But go ahead and enjoy the game, brother. Hopefully. <laughs> all you can all, all get 22 through minutes it. of it. All 22 minutes. <laughs> yep. That's it. That's it. Oh, that's man. So I, I found a, uh, a Twitter account this week that I, I feel I have to share with everyone that is just amazing. It's called The Tweet of God. Yes, it's God Himself. It, right? Yeah, yeah um, purely, surely it's it's got to be God Himself. Like, so like the, tweeted like, the Lord. He said, "I am Twitter. I know how to tweet, and you don't understand. The birds were made by me before man. There was Twitter. <laughs> there was the Lord, and so saith me." Um, in an ideal scenario, the president of the of the United States and the worst human being in the world would not be two different people. That's as per God. Um, yeah, that's the most recent tweet from God. <laughs> he could have said, fuck the president bigly, and that would have been a whole lot better than that tweet. 
Uh, yeah, but he also did say that hell is a journey, not a destination. So, uh, uh, well, I, I, all I know is life is a highway, and I want to ride it all night long. So, I mean, he can he can <laughs> say what he wants to say. You know, he is God. <laughs> Uh, yeah, th- this is a super interesting Twitter account, uh, regardless of your or it's, your religious persuasion and uh, or well, political persuasion for that matter. Like it's, clear, it's it's clearly not meant for Christians. No, or, <laughs> or, or Republicans. But it's it's interesting to just scroll. Through. I mean, even if you do identify as either of those two groups, it's still interesting to scroll through it and just like I don't know. In honor of the season, all masturbation will be sin free through Christmas. Happy holidays. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, also, you guys are really late on God on Twitter. How how old is this account? Yeah, I um this, this October twenty ten to me. Yeah, he's been yeah. around for a while. Yeah. The Lord has. He he gets a lot of the retweets, as the kids say. And, and this is one of the things that I find amazing. He's only following one person. Yeah. Who's well, following? He, Back Justin in day, Bieber. He, he used, yeah, <laughs> back, back in the day, he used to follow a lot of people that he cut it back to the Biebs. Just so I'm wondering if Biebs. Justin Bieber is the the person behind this account. Because that would be a fun twist. That also be giving Justin Bieber way too much credit. <laughs> way too much credit. I can I'll bet your lives that it's not Justin Bieber running God's account. That's mighty kind of you. Hey. I do what I can. I, that's <laughs> almighty kind. Hey, um, hey Owen, uh, so you're a dad, you go, and you like movies. Did you take your daughter to see the new Wreck-It Ralph movie? Um, we have graduated from cartoon kid movies. Unless it's like an epic movie, uh, or unless we had to take one of her little punk friends, we no longer engage in uh, the kid filth of movies. We don't like to soil ourselves with the company of minions squeaking about the theater and uh, whining and crying and saying, ooh, mommy, ah, dad, like, no. Um, so well, sorry, said no, no, we have not seen epic. Wreck-It Ralph. So you, you, you said unless it's epic. I will argue that, that Ralph Breaks the Internet is an epic movie. Like, I, I took the family to see this, and it was fantastic. It was really, really, really good. And I, I think, think you should. I think you should take the family to see it again and again and, and just, again and keep and seeing again, it and again and again. <laughs> and Amos, what? It's about time we find out why that we have such a strong. Other than the fact that it legitimately is a good movie, why do we have such a strong opinion about why people should go see it over and over? Uh, of course, uh, Actually, that'd be as soon as. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to ask you directly. I'm Welcome gonna ask- to your movie, Jeff Bennett, presented by DiamondClub.tv for the week of November 26, 2018. I'm your host, Big Voice J. If you're still eating leftovers by this point of the week, you need hungrier family members. I'll be over next year. Let's go to the scoreboard. Team Movie Party's in last place with $89.9 million. Team Bond Squad's in fifth place with a boost from Robin Hood, giving them a total of $203.2 million. Team Drunk Kids Gaming falls to fourth place with $216.1 million. Team Game Nights Creed 2 and Green Book debuts give them third place with $273.9 million. Team Have a Drink falls to second place with $357.2 million. And just edging them out with $358.6 million is Team Ritual Misery. Let's your movie draft minute. All totals are accurate as of November 28, 2018. That's right. A quick dip into second place, and we were back on top of the winter hey, movie draft. Hey, hey, hey! There is not an episode of Ritual Misery <laughs> where we played where we played the movie draft minute where we were not in first place. That's right. So, according according to our show, we're we've been first place the whole season. Yep. Anything else is fake news. Let me tell you, <laughs> uh, dude. Like how fortuitous that our bye week, our Thanksgiving bye week. Was the only week that we dipped temporarily into second place. Yep. <laughs> Other than that, we have been in first place this entire freaking game. And I said this two weeks ago when we did our last show that Have a Drink was going to overtake us when um uh what what movie was that whatever movie that was that came out that I said was, was going to put them over us. And then as soon as Ralph came out, we were going to be right back on top. And that's exactly what happened. 
Uh, now, granted, we're barely in first place. We're we've only got them by about two million dollars. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, man, I think Ralph is going to continue to make money. Um, uh, Who has the Grinch? The Grinch. Yes, have a drink. That was the movie. That was the movie that put have a drink temporarily above us uh, for about a week. The Grinch is the only competitor that I see right now. Yeah. And um, yeah. Anyway, so us and have a drink are are like bas- we're basically neck and neck. And I think we're gonna we're probably gonna trade spots uh, several times over the next. Yeah, because the Grinch is still making money. It's still pulling thirty million over the weekend. So. Yeah. Yeah. And, and as Christmas goes closer, people have off the more gonna go see the Grinch. Yeah. Yeah, Even but what's gonna pull us ahead to- though? Like so. Two weeks from now, um, or three, no, two weeks from now, Mortal Engines comes out. Like, yep. we've got the next movie to come out, and that's going to put it, like, we're going to stay in first place for... Mortal Engines? Yeah. Ken, Ken's all hyped up about this movie. Big, the biggest flop of the year. That, Dude, that, sorry. I, that can't be true, because, uh, uh, like, uh, Robin Hood uh, came out last weekend, and it oh, was the biggest yeah, yeah, flop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> biggest flop of the month. Robin Hood took a right, million right. dollars, a hundred million dollars to make it, and they made six or fourteen million on opening weekend. It's, yeah. oh my gosh, the Robin Hood movie. Like, come on, dude. Like, but what it, is Hollywood going to learn? Like, stop trying to make Robin Hood movies. From what I heard, man, they, they they did everything exactly wrong in that whole movie. Dude, and plus, like, we just had a Robin Hood movie. Like, wait twenty years, come out with a new Robin Hood, and people are going to go pay to see it. There's like fifteen more in the queue. Like, there's going to be a, an onslaught of Hollywood movies coming out with Robin Hood as the, the lead yeah. character. So every, everybody's is. saying that everyone's saying that they don't see Mortal Engines doing well at all. And I understand the sentiment. Number one, there wasn't a whole lot of hype for this movie, and not a lot of build up, right? Mm-hmm. Number two, the trailers that are coming out are fucking garbage and makes it look <laughs> like complete fucking shit and they should stop. The and be- teaser trailer that came out like months ago should have been the only trailer. And, and being they- and being in chat says, uh, just rename it Ford. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is going to be the sleeper hit of the year. I think uh, uh, now Owen, you might be right. Maybe this is like the biggest pile of garbage overpriced piece of shit of the season. Maybe. I mean, it could be, but I'm still, I wouldn't, I wouldn't and might be right. Usually don't go together. <laughs> it's usually, Oh, and you were right. Um, so just prepare yourself. Cause I, I'm telling you that that concept is stupid. <laughs> Nobody cares about moving shitty cities. with a crappy mountaintop who wants to play pirates of the Caribbean with fucking shitty little cities. Nobody like it's gonna be so bad, dude. That movie's gonna flip flop, 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 flop. Have you seen flop. Mad Max Fury Road? Did the cities move? No, but <laughs> but this is basically Mad Max Fury Road plus Pirates of the Caribbean plus the brain behind the massive success of the of the Lord of the Rings series. Like this is this a towel has... plus lotion plus my hand. It's a jerk off. <laughs> it is nothing like Mad Max Fury Road, which is a gritty remake of a series and an epic tale and a franchise with a name and a base and a standard set above everything else. What are you talking about? Don't just just OK. I know you need it for your little movie draft and I know you're reaching, <laughs> but don't fall off the cliff trying to reach for a cloud, brother. It ain't going to happen. It's not in your grave. Hey, it's you know, not if, available if, to I, you. If, it, if I end up being wrong, I will admit that I'm wrong, but I'm still holding by it for at least for the next two weeks. I am still holding on <laughs> to the idea that the thing, this thing is going to be big because tell me something that Peter Jackson has released in the last two decades that has not made all the fucking money in the world. You can say what you want about the Hobbit and how the Hobbit sucked, but guess what? The Hobbit brought in truckloads of cash. And this I is, is, think, is this a book? I honestly don't know. That's but how you know Peter it's not going to make any fucking and- money. Okay. So yeah, Peter <laughs> Jackson. So you, you keep equating shit without the real base of reality on how to, I mean, you're like Swiss cheese. Everything you say, I'm just putting holes in it, brother. You keep saying stuff and I'm just going pow, pow, pow. You, you coming up with these half ass excuses. No, it ain't a book. Cause you don't know it's a book. I know the Hobbit's a book. I know a lot of motherfuckers read it. I know a lot of motherfuckers that read wanted to go see what a Hobbit looked like. So they want to go see it. I know they know Lord of the Rings cause they read it and they wanted to go see it. And then they brought their friends to go. I know Harry Potter works because they books. 
this moving shitty cities. You don't even know it's a book. I don't know it's a book. Guess what? Nobody knows. Uh, we'll got, see. Got anything I, else? I think, got anything else for me to poke holes in Swiss? No, I, I, so I, I, well, I said, I mean, maybe you could poke holes in this. I, I predicted a long time ago that this, this would be a second weekend movie where nobody knows what the fuck it is or why I should go see this. But the few people that go see it in week one, they're going to love it. And they're going to tell their friends and it's going to be a week two moneymaker. That was my prediction from mm. like from the draft. So I don't know. Okay. I need you to, um, when you, okay. I'm going to give you 14 days for this movie release. Okay. <laughs> All right. After 14 days on the Thursday show, I need you to staple a note to your chest that says, I was raw and wear it the whole episode. <laughs> now, if you happen to be right, uh, I will I will buy a original misery t shirt and wear it uh, for one of my shows. But I, I I'm not going to buy one of your shirts. I'm just telling you right now, it's not going to happen. <laughs> but you will have to staple a note to your chest to okay. say that you were raw. Oof. And I, I will promote the shit out of all of O Doctor's things. He's two yeah, weeks. Yeah. Don't don't even do that because people 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 put good holes and stuff. You be saying I can't have you out here promoting <laughs> the streets right now. You know you you got to get a, a more point. sound uh, 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 stability in your brain cells for you to go out here and support me. I don't want you. I don't want somebody saying, "Well, what's O Doctor about?" Did you start talking about Peter Jackson and making up stuff that don't equate <laughs> oh, to me? I, okay. I can't have you out here misrepresenting me like you're doing this I will, movie. I will hire. I will hire a competent, well-respected person. Oh, okay. Do okay, a then we, promo. Then we, for... then we, then we can get it done, and I appreciate you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> hey, Kent, you about ready for this? Can I please have your attention? In the last 30 minutes, Kent's done something. Now you've got a guess. He was very excited. Kent's game. Play with him. Play with him. Play with him. Play with him. All right. Amos, Owen, I have a game for you guys, and I'm calling it 8 16 who gives a bit? The All right. Point the, game, the point of the game is I'm going to read you the title and description of a video game. Mm-hmm. And then you are going to tell me, was this game made for the Atari 2600 mm-hmm. or for the Nintendo Entertainment System? So the original NES. Gotcha. So 8-bit versus 8-bit. Um, or is it? Yeah. Four no, bit yeah. They were both eight bit systems. Yeah, That's okay. right. So Atari 2600 and the uh, Nintendo Entertainment System or the original NES. Okay. Uh, but didn't you say the game was called 16 something versus eight something? Yeah. Same. I always try to come up with some kind of, you know, something, something clever. Seems and, like um, you put holes in yourself there, Swiss boy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm recognizing the theme here. Okay, let's let's carry on with right. eight versus so, eight equals so, sixteen. Uh, Kent, aka Swiss Cheese, is over here making <laughs> games, and uh, this one's called Eight Sixteen. Who gives a bit? Uh, Amos, we're gonna start with you this time. Okay, just because you're the first name that I have in my list. All right, so. Your game, mm-hmm. you tell me if it's either Atari or NES. Okay. Your game is Chase the Chuck Wagon. Chase the Chuck Wagon. Chase the Chuck Wagon. Can you use it in a sentence? It is. So Chase the Chuck Wagon is a video game that is based on the old Purina dog food commercials. Now, wow. mind you, a lot of times I give you like real versus fake. These are all real games that had a release. Mm. Chase um, the Chuck I'm going to go with uh, Nintendo. You're saying the Chase the Chuck Wagon is Nintendo? Mm-hmm. You would be incorrect. That was for the NES. Owen, your you, game. You, you mean that was for the 2600? Oh, for the, yeah, I'm sorry. Not for the NES. It is for the Atari 2600. Owen. <laughs> Owen has me thrown. Like, yeah. Like, uh, well, your, your game's and, uh, already crap. Chris Cheese over here. Like, he's, is, he's, I'm gonna poke should, holes in everything he does. So now I'm like, you, I'm self sabotaging at this point. You should have asked Amos what the game was. He could have gave his answer. I could have gave my answer. Then you could have said who was right, or we were both right. Then we could have topic. <laughs> but I'm not saying to say it's your show. Just go ahead and ask me a question. Go ahead and say what you got to say. Go ahead. Uh, so Swiss ask. Cheese over here is gonna go ahead and do it his way and ask Owen. <laughs> Princess Tomato in the Salad Kingdom. This game 
Uh, so the description here as Sir Cucumber, you have to rescue Princess Tomato from the evil Minister Pumpkin. Is Princess Tomato in the Salad Kingdom a release for the Atari or for the NES? Uh, I'm going to say NES. Your answer of NES is correct. I remember this game. Uh, I, only thing I know about that game is that it's a princess and Nintendo has a sick affiliation <laughs> with women with crowns. I've never heard of that game in my life. <laughs> that is a, that's a, an astute observation on your part. Uh, Very good much job. so, Swiss cheese. Amos, your, your next game is called Communist Mutants from Space. So Communist Mutants from Space, it's kind of like Space Invaders, mm. except... The aliens are all commie bastards. Mm. Was this for the Atari or NES? Atari. Atari, you say that communist mutants from space is Atari? Yep. You would be correct. So the score is now tied one to one, and we go back to Owen. But is next it one to one sorry. because he missed one, but I didn't get my question <laughs> a second there. Yeah, go ahead, continue. I'm carrying on right here with you. Your next game is called Master Chew and the Drunkard Who. The premise Atari. of the game here is you're a <laughs> warrior and have to rescue your friend from alcoholism. Are you sticking with your uh, preliminary answer there of Atari? I, I, I am. I am. I don't. I am. All right. So you're going to say that Master Chew and Drunkard Who is an Atari game, and you would be incorrect, sir. Oh man, my bad. <laughs> so after two questions apiece, you are still tied at one and one. Now we're now we're tied at one and one. Okay, I got it. I see how the mask going with the game. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Amos, back to you. Your game is called Genghis Khan. In Atari. Genghis Khan, your goal is to take over the world and father as many children as you can. Atari. You say that Genghis Khan was for Atari. It was for the NES, my friend. I could have told you that. Asians making babies for a game, that's definitely Nintendo's alley. I told you about the princesses, the weird culture they got going on, fetish stuff. Go ahead. <laughs> All right, Owen, your next one is called I Want My Mommy. This game, you play as a teddy bear that wakes up from a nightmare and needs a hug from his mommy. Is that Atari or NES? Uh, That's real life. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, you know, I guess this is where Ted came from. Uh, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just going to go out there and say uh, Atari, I guess. All right. So I want my mummy or want my mommy. Jesus. I'm not, I sounded British there for half a second. Swiss I want cheese. my mommy. You said is Atari. It is indeed Atari. So after six questions, three questions apiece, the score is one for Amos and two for Owen. Yeah, or, or two to one because you leave with the winner, but continue on. Go ahead. Oh, my gosh. I, you're just continuously making me into Swiss so, cheese over here. See, see this, is, this is the fun thing about having a guest on the show. If I badger <laughs> you enough, you guys will have me on for another two years. and uh, <laughs> That'll be good for me. It'll be almost good for you. This will be a classic episode of Why Don't We Bring This Brother on Our Show. Continue on. <laughs> hey, Miss, your next question. Your next game is called Sunday Fun Day. The goal of this game is to ride your skateboard and get to Sunday school on time. Is Sunday fun day for the NES or the Atari? I'm going to go Atari. NES. Amos, you're going to say that Sunday fun day is for the Atari. <laughs> it was for the NES. I told you about fetish and things, boy. Paperboy, you don't remember the game Paperboy? That sounds like a precursor to Paperboy. Got to use your mind, Seamus. You got to use your mind, brother. <laughs> oh, Amos, with your lack of imagination. Owen, I think you have the inside track of how this, uh, how this name game works. So I'm going to ask you, Revenge of the Beefsteak Tomatoes. Is this an Atari or a Nintendo title? Atari. You say that Revenge of the Beefs Take Tomatoes is an Atari title? You are correct, sir. 
<laughs> All you uh, have to do is listen to the absurditude of these questions. At this point, there's no way that Seamus <laughs> could catch me in my dominant lead of uh, three. Uh, <laughs> but we can continue on if you have more questions to play. I'm just saying, if you would have asked this either or, I could have been blown him out the water. But you're playing the game in this slow Ninja Turtle type of fashion. And I got to sit here and listen to this man flounder about with these answers. You're killing me, Swiss. <laughs> all right. All right. Amos, uh, I, I'm going to give you an opportunity. One more opportunity to bonus to question. Not <laughs> do not shame yourself. Fully, oh, is fully. that even possible at this point? I mean, you are the shameless one, right? Mm. So, all right. So Amos Kool-Aid man. Kool-Aid man is uh, the game when evil thirsties thirsties is capitalized here. The, the evil thirsties tried to ruin the pool party by drinking from the pool. So therefore as Kool-Aid man, you have to feed them your refreshing liquid innards. Kool-Aid man. Is that an Atari or NES game? Well, uh, going along with the, uh, the crazy fetish theme, I'm going to go ahead and call, go Nintendo here. So uh, you say the Kool-Aid man is Nintendo. <laughs> it's Atari. <laughs> Definitely Atari. Okay. <laughs> Whatever, man. <laughs> oh, and I do have one more question. There's do you no, want to pat your lead even more? There's no rhyme or reason to how bad I'm losing this game. Just add, no. an, add an exclamation point to your to your victory over Amos by answering one more. Trick question. Go ahead. Ask it. All right. So the last one here is Zombie Nation. And in Zombie Nation, you are a decapitated samurai head that destroys buildings and cities. Does that sound like an Atari or NES game to you? Atari game. You say that Zombie Nation is Atari. <laughs> that would be one of the few questions that you got incorrect on N- this quiz. Nintendo uh, let somebody cut somebody's head off. I, I'd like to see your fact sheets, sir. I don't really <laughs> trust the, yeah, the verbiage I, uh, that you portrayed to me that that sounds I, like a Nintendo I, system see, game. I can... Uh, so, uh, WW, no, I do have the receipts and I can email it to you if you so desire. Um, Owen, uh, you have thoroughly defeated the shameless, nameless, fameless, uh, one over there, Amos. Uh, congratulations, Owen, on winning the game. Best, Amos, worst what a- win of my life. <laughs> I'd like to put that on record. <laughs> What else we got going on, Amos? Um, I tell you what, man. Uh, so Owen mentioned it during d- during the pre-show, and we are all dads here. Owen's got a little show that he likes to likes to talk about uh, called "Raising a Ninja" because that is what he feels he is doing for society. He is raising a ninja so that she can go out and conquer every uh, concept and thought and imagination she could ever have. Owen, what's your key to raising a ninja with Leah? Um, so I, before I, I'm not going to give you the key. I, I'm just going to ruin your whole show today. I'm just telling stories and saying ridiculous things. So let me tell you how Raising the Ninja started. Um, first, I, I blessed the mother of my child with a child. And when we went to the doctor to find out if it was a girl or a boy, I said to myself, uh, if it's a girl, we got a problem. <laughs> and so the doctor said, oh, it's a girl. I got really mad. I walked out to the car. I said, don't talk to me. She started talking to me. I punched the windshield, put a crack in the windshield. And I said, didn't I tell you don't talk to me? And she said, what's wrong? I said, we're having a girl and you're too nice and the world's evil. So we got two choices. Either we raise my daughter to be a ninja or I uh, put sugar intravenously into her bottle and or veins, plump her up to be uh, obese put matches and lighters in her eyes to mess up her vision and never get her teeth fixed. And then one day when she's like 25, she finds a man that loves her. You know, she looks like a gangly beast. I I put her in the gym, get her some liposuction, get her some LASIK and get her braces. And then he could have the beautiful daughter that I knew was underneath that cow of a pig the whole time. Or uh, we could raise her to be a confident assassin of men and women and business. She chose the latter and so forth. I am raising a ninja. Wow. That's, um, yeah, we, we all, all we're missing is, uh, is Stan Lee to write that up and, and illustrate it. That's all we're missing oh. there. No so dizzy, some, some, no doubt. 
Uh, I'm a so I'm a father of sons. I only have boys, and uh, something that that the boys' mother and I used to always say is that that we have to worry about two penises. Uh, people that have daughters have to worry about all the penises. Hmm. Yeah. See, the whole penis is to think about it. The, here's a basic concept I tell people about when they say girls are easier, or boys are easier. Just let's break it down with prom. Okay. So prom, you have a son, you rent him a tuxedo for $99. You get him a haircut for $15. Yeah. You buy a corsage for $40 for the lady. And then you tell him, don't go to jail. Don't kill yourself. And you give him some condoms. You say, go get him, tiger. But if you got a daughter, you have to buy a dress anywhere from $400 to $1,000. Purse to match the dress. Nails to match. Shoes to match. Got to get her hair done. Then you got to get the makeup slapped on her face. Basically, you're spending $1,500 to $2,000 to make your daughter look like a high-class hooker to send her out to go be with this dude that's only renting the tux. He give a shit if he spills juice on her or not. He taking it back the next day. And that's how it works with girls and boys. It's, it's so different. You know, the boys just go get them, Tiger. The girls, you just preparing them for the lamb slaughter. But not me. Not me. My daughter is the slaughter. You know, <laughs> something happened to my daughter. I ain't got to worry about going to get I'm like, what hospital he in? You know, but <laughs> it's just it's just weird when you have boys and girls. It's, it's so crazy. The, like you said, two penises versus all of them. It, it, it is rough. I think she's, but I sleep well at night knowing that uh, my daughter, if nothing else, is going to be as crazy as me. And God help anybody who tries to mess with her. <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, this is a show. So you do a, a podcast, Raising a Ninja. Is that is that correct? Yeah. There, there's two episodes or three episodes, and I got like three episodes in the can. I, I try to incorporate her in some of the episodes, but I can't let her listen to them sometimes because I say <laughs> outlandish things like I'm saying right now. She can only be privy. <laughs> to some of the information but yeah i got uh, i got some fresh some fresh episodes coming in the oven and uh, she joins me sometimes you know we uh we did an episode we talked about 13 reasons why uh we talked about a little bit of rape culture and, and people say oh she's too young for that well guess what uh the youngest kid to have a baby last year was 11 so i don't know when's too young or too early to talk to your kids about uh it's never too pressures early about hmm. anything Hey, um, Bad Weave in chat says the father of a girl has two jobs. One, prepare her for the unfair world she'll meet and teach her how to bend it to her will. And two, keep her off the pole. Now, see, I'm averse to the keep her off the pole method. I, I personally think that the pole has value. <laughs> um, I personally think that uh, y y y you want to keep them out of prostitution. Getting on the pole is okay. But the new pole is the internet. If she wants to sit at home on her webcam and have people send her hundreds of dollars so she don't have to ask me for my money and the safety of her own home, I might even uh, uh, not, not steer her towards it, but advise her so she knows her options to keep her off the pole. Like, hey, you don't even need the pole. You can you could uh, pimp and change this to the web now. You could just go in your own room and, and read a book and bra. Like, you're on Twitch right now. Go ahead and uh, click over. To, you'll find a large breasted woman whispering into a microphone and people throwing hundreds of dollars at her at night. So, I mean, I, I, I fully understand the representative of keeping her off the pole, but there's a lot of new polls that these girls are out here doing getting this money. And I, I would advise her to use whatever pole she feels comfortable with. <laughs> That's an interesting take. Amos, uh, you're a father of daughters. I'm curious to hear where, where you sit on the uh, uh, stay off the pole versus choose your pole. Um, I'm going to have to just uh, give, give a blanket uh, uh, affirmation of everything your doctor just said, because this is exactly how I feel. Like you, 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 you can't stop them from, from doing whatever they're going to no. do. You got you to direct them to the, the healthiest and most beneficial way to do the things they're going to do. I'm, I'm going to tell you another little story. Let me tell you a little secret little, little story. This is, this is stuff you get with raising a ninja. Um, so I remember I was selling weed in high school. And uh, one of the, one of the uh, girls that I was selling weed to had a note in her locker. And uh, a teacher found it, took it to the police. 
the police came to my home and said, uh, well, we know Owen doesn't sell weed, but this person wrote the note down and the mom wanted us to contact you. We know Owen's a good guy and he wouldn't do that because everybody knew me in town. But my dad said, as soon as the cops left, he's like, you selling weed, ain't you? I said, yeah, I am. He said, okay, <laughs> well, uh, are you smoking the weed? I said, no, dad, it's just for the money. He said, all right, well, I'm going to tell you how to sell this weed and not get caught. But I just know if you get caught, that's on you. You know what I mean? You taking the consequence. <laughs> but I'm just saying, if you want to do it, this is how you do it. And I listened to his knowledge and his tutelage and knock on wood. I had never got caught. I don't need to knock on wood. That was in the past. I had never got caught. So I'm but just saying, there's patient, different kinds patient. of ways to parent. And sometimes giving the kid the information to make their own mistakes, but helping them is the right way to go. So, so let me get this straight now. You, you can, you know how to successfully sell weed in high school and not get caught, but you can't stop from getting pulled over while black. Um, one is not the other. Uh, <laughs> don't become like Swiss cheese with these horrible analogies. Okay. Um, actively going out and selling marijuana is something that I have to go in. Uh, observe and, and bring myself out to being black while driving around my vehicle is just my existence of life. I cannot ex- stop existing. I, I have to use a vehicle to get around. You know, it's it's a different thing. Now, what you could ask yourself is how I was never getting stopped before when I had the marijuana. You see what I'm saying? Was, I was on a bicycle, <laughs> brother. It was a pulling cats over oh, on bicycles. Oh. So that's the answer to your problems. You just need to start selling weed again. You'll start getting pulled over. Well, what I really need to do is get my fat ass on a bicycle. It's really <laughs> the thing. You just, you, so again, Swiss cheese, to you, all your you totally missed the bar on that statement. But uh, no, that's, it's, that's it's, it's par for the problems. course. You know, you, you, you took the selling weed again over just riding a bicycle instead of being in the car. I, you, you just, who you are making yourself look ritually miserable today. You are just, <laughs> <laughs> ooh, brother, it's bad for you. Oh, man. I, it, uh, one talent that you absolutely have is is assigning nicknames to people, and I think this one might stick with me. Uh, oh, it might. Swiss Everybody team. poking holes in your conversations, brother. Your, your kids gonna start calling you Daddy Swiss. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ken. Uh, before we uh, before we get out of here, uh, I hear you've got a voicemail that you'd like us to listen to, and you're gonna slam your phone up against the microphone to see if it works. Let's, let's, yeah. Let's see how well this goes. Yeah, I got. <laughs> I, got a, I got a voicemail the other day and I, I just, anyway, it was from an unknown number, which I mean, it sounds like it's from a business. So that kind of makes sense. But anyway, I'll just go ahead and I'll just go ahead and play it. Hi, this is Kelly calling from your CVS pharmacy. I just like to let you know that your anal wart removal cream, your butt plugs and your Viagra are now in. And we also got those extra small condoms that you needed. So please go ahead and let me know when you'll be coming in so I can set those aside for you. Thank you and have a great day. That's that's not a weird voicemail, dude. That's just your life. <laughs> I don't remember like having prescription or sub- uh, yeah, prescriptions for those things. I, I I don't know, it was just random. And I know we, we like to play voicemails and, and, and read emails that we receive, and that's um you, so you got that voicemail on your phone? On my phone. <laughs> okay. Is that weird? So, I mean, it's not weird because technically speaking, if you if this is a cry for help, you could just ask because you don't have to play a voicemail <laughs> with things that you need apparently in your life. I mean, I'm just saying it, it, it. We're here for you. I'm not a lifelong friend. Uh, with that voicemail, I don't plan on being a lifelong friend, but I'm sure that Amos is here for you if you need assistance of any kind. He's probably not going to help apply the cream, but he'll go pick it up for you and drop it off at the house. You see what I'm saying? That like, you don't have to come on the show and pretend like somebody died a wrong number. That was an extensive voicemail for someone to leave. Not only that, it's with pertinent personal information. They're not going to just dial a random number willy-nilly and leave a message like that. So I'm just saying, Swiss, if you need help, if you need a hug, just 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 call on Amos. You know, he's here for you. You know, brothers in arms and all that kind of stuff. I'm not in the military, but I know there's a code. I know there's honor amongst thieves in that realm. So just, just lean on him. Uh, don't come to the crowd, to the audience, to your, to, to your listeners. And try to get some kind of sympathy or uh, help. Or, that, that's not what we're here for. We're here for the entertainment of a podcast and a show, Swiss. Okay? So just, uh, again, sorry for your problems and situation that you're going through. But but just, just go ahead and take that off air and talk to your <laughs> brother Amos about that, okay? Uh, I will take that under advisement. Meanwhile, <laughs> if anybody... 
if anybody wants us to read something or play something that you created on this show, you can email us podcast at ritualmisery.com or Amos, where can they send us voicemails? Uh, that'd be five, six, seven, six, nine, eight, seven, six, seven, two, five, uh, six, seven, six, nine, eight, seven, six, seven, two. Yeah, one I eight, 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 eight ain't no cream. <laughs> yeah, pound I four we'll play it on the show. So, so call and leave a voicemail. It could be <coughs> something insightful. It could be something monumental. It could be something fucking random, stupid, whatever it is. We will play it on. We're a clear HIPAA violation. That's cool too. Um, hey, we got a New Year's Eve is coming up. We got the streamathon going on. If you've got uh, the will to join us, raise money for sick kids, and uh, make sure that nobody has to spend New Year's Eve alone, cruise on over to uh, bit.ly slash streamathon two zero one eight sign up, and we're gonna start uh, sending out the official invitations for folks very soon. We've got. Uh, about what about 80 percent of what we need to make this thing a success this uh-huh. year so we're just looking for a few more people to jump in there and uh, take up some time and, and make this year's streamathon a success yeah even if you've never streamed before and you're just like you know this is something i'm i'm you know i, I thought about dipping my toe in give it a shot man this is awesome you, you're gonna have all the support in the world you're gonna have more support during the streamathon than you would from just a cold start uh all by your lonesome you're gonna have a super duper support group uh, behind you in a tech support and a, like a whole, basically a whole behind the curtain tech crew helping you out with this. So this is a wonderful opportunity for, for just, first time. Just make sure it's not someone with the, uh, the anal wart cream that, that's behind well, you. Well, I mean, and, it, and if that's your, you know, if that's what you got going on, you know, that's fine. Well, um, that's, that's fine too. We accept everyone <laughs> in here in the diamond club and on the streamathon. part of what we do is, is just celebrate, people and the togetherness and how we can all all come together and enjoy each other's company. So, you know, bring it, whatever it is, bring it. That's bit.ly slash streamathon 2018 sign up. Amos, what else we got going on? YOLO420.com slash RMP200 to tell us about your favorite moments of the last 195 episodes so that our 200th episode, we can have some, uh, some, some flashbacks and some, uh, some, some, tales to be told cruise on over to yolo 420.com slash rmp 200 and tell us what your favorite moments of the show were yeah we've already got some really great feedback but we'd love to add yours to it it will take you i promise less than a minute to take this poll uh so head over there yolo 420.com slash rmp 200 that's what uh mbeam said was uh it takes less than a minute to take the poll hey owen uh where can people find you at man what what, uh, what you got going on where can they uh, find you on the socials uh, I'm at Odacta on everything. And as I usually say, if I'm not there, it's not validated. Um, so you can find me O H D O C T A H and, uh, I Q M Z dot com is where I put all my podcasts when I do them. Um, doing a show with the, with the great nameless there. We're doing a tech show where I, uh, I don't answer anybody's voicemails cause you know, shady things happen, but we do talk about the weekly tech in a, in a very, ferocious manner and uh when i'm awake that is <laughs> I'm, I'm out here on the internet trying to hang out can't i do apologize uh for picking on you this show but i do like lunch meat and you are swiss cheese so i mean you kind of did it to yourself today brother i didn't really want to have to do it to you like that but i mean you, you kind of kind of folded in on yourself dad i can still see through it you know what i mean that's on you you got to take a look in the mirror <laughs> today when you get off the episode and talk to yourself and say why did i do that and why that I do this. I mean, talk to yourself for real, Candace. Figure out what you need to do to fix these situations. You know, patch up the hole. You know, get yourself some scotch tape or maybe some ham. And, you know, I mean, that's what you do. You melt the ham with the Swiss fill up the hose. Whatever you got to do, bro. I'm not going to tell you how to live your life, but, you know, uh, go see Rick and Ralph again and then remind yourself about whatever it is you need to do to fix these situations, Ken. You go ahead and do that for me. Oh. I, I will, I, like I said before, I will take all of your words of wisdom under advisement. Um, no, but ser- seriously, Owen, uh, you're freaking awesome. And thank you for being our guest this week. Um, it's awesome. And you guys, if you have not listened to IQMZ tech, I strongly encourage get out there. It just go to your favorite podcatcher. Look for it. IQMZ tech. Um, it's Amos. It's Odocta. They're talking about tech and they're not tech reporters. They're just a couple of dudes that got opinions. And it's great. If you liked Owen on this episode, 
uh, talking shit about, about me being Swiss cheese. You're going to really love him talking shit to Amos about being the shameless, nameless, fameless, whatever, <laughs> fill in the blank one. Um, it's a lot of fun. It's a blast. And you will enjoy listening to these guys. It, it's talk. a... I, 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 it, it's uh, really, it's, I, I was going to say, hold on, wait, look, I did that whole show with that voice. I, I, I'm i proud of myself. I went the whole well, you, episode you, with that you, smoky deep voice, man. You, that was good, man. That, you, started that was out as, you started out as Barry White. You ended up Black Colonel Sanders. So I don't know. Oh, yeah, hey, 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 the, the phlegm started drying up on me, brother. It's been an hour. What, what do you want? I did the best that I could. You see what I'm saying? That was, that was I did the class. best that I could. So yeah, IQ and Z Tech. Uh, it's it's it, again not journalists. It's two guys that are really passionate about tech and get really pissed off when companies are stupid. So um, we have a fun time with it. Uh, Kent, yeah. where can people find you on the interwebs? Yeah, man. So I'm pretty much Del Noche or Del Noche seventy seven anywhere on the internet except for Twitter, which is like the primary place that I am, and I'm R M underscore Del Noche on that platform. So follow me there or wherever you feel like following me or whatever. Amos, where are you at? Find me at Ethan Kane, E T H A N C A I N E on the Twitter. If uh, you find me somewhere else and it's probably not me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> or it probably is. You just like, you, you forgot about that account. Uh, years ago. Like it's either Twitter, or Instagram. And I, I, I'm so, I, I don't get it. I don't, I don't understand the Instagram. Uh, you can follow the show on Twitter at ritual misery. And of course you can find all our links and more ways to support the show and give feedback to our, at our website, ritualmisery.com. Uh, we are live every Thursday at 7 p.m. Pacific ish. We actually are on time tonight, which is amazing. And uh, that's at diamondclub.tv, twitch.com slash ritual misery. Thank you so much to Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use the music I'm about to play right now because I forgot a little while ago. And uh, thank you for listening and or watching. For Kent, for Odakta, and for me, and for you, this has been your 195th Ritual Misery Podcast. Yeah. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> R-I-T-U-A-L-M-I-S-E-L-Y